Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today I got a super exciting project for you guys, which is a $350 budget ITX build. So let's get started. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had to go over to my father's house because he just bought a 500 gigabyte SSD and he wanted me to clone his hard drive over to the new SSD. Now, if you guys follow me on Twitter, you've probably seen this picture and this computer, yes, it's sitting on top of a crate and yes, it still has a floppy drive with an IDE cable sticking out. And if your motherboard still supports IDE, it's time to upgrade. So I decided to build him a computer, which is this build right here. Now this build is actually more geared towards productivity and light gaming. So what I mean by productivity, it's like browsing, uh, email, Excel, Word, stuff like that. And then some light gaming, meaning probably titles from 2015 and before. Anything newer, you probably have to run in really low settings or lower resolution just to play. But it still will work. So to begin, we have this case. This actually took me about three days to find. I did a lot of research on it, and this is the result of it. Now I had to find the case within the budget of $60 or lower. And there was like, I think three or four uh, cases that were runner up, but this ultimately caught my eye because of one, the form factor, two, how it's really open, but it's not. Now for ITX builds, you usually run into problems with cooling. This guy does not have that problem because the entire case is like meshed. You got uh, breathing room in the front, you got breathing room in the back, and breathing room on the bottom and top. Not only that, you could actually water cool with this guy. There's a panel inside where you could fit a water cooler, and you're really not sacrificing much with this. You can fit a full-size graphic card along with four 2.5 millimeter drives and one three and a half millimeter drives. What's really cool about this, on the top of the case, you actually have a CD-ROM drive. So you're really not losing much. On top of everything else, it still uses an actual regular power supply compared to some ITXs where you need to use the Pico power supply. So with that being said and out of the way, it's a really cool case. This is the Cougar QBX. Now, moving on to the motherboard, I chose this ASRock. Uh, there was two motherboards within the price range of $100, and this was one of them, and the other one was a gigabit. Now, when I looked at it, I decided to choose this. That's because of the heat sinks on top of the VRM. Now, if you decide to do any type of overclocking with higher voltages, that is very important, and this supported that. Also has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so if my father decides to move it somewhere and he doesn't have a network cable, he could always use the Wi-Fi. Now, along with this motherboard, I decided to choose the Ryzen 3. This is a really decent CPU and it's got the built-in Vega 8 in there. And originally this build was actually built around the new Athlon 200GE. And the more I studied about it, the more I looked at it, I figured that it's really not worth, I mean, it's $55 and it's really cheap CPU, but, um, for price to performance, the $99 Ryzen 3 is way much better than the 200. Now the 200, you could definitely do productivity work, but any light gaming, I don't think it's, it's gonna struggle. So I decided to go with this instead. For the RAM, I went for the best speed in its budget for $50, $60 uh, RAM. This is a eight gigabyte dual channel rip jaws at 2666 megahertz speed. Now, if you want to see why I went for this speed compared to a lower speed with cheaper RAM, check out my previous video about RAM speed and Ryzen. Last but not least, the power supply. Uh, this is a certified 80 plus bronze, which will be able to deliver enough power for any type of upgrade you want to do to this computer. Now, overall, why I chose this type of build, there is so much room for improvement. Now, if you decided to go for a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7, this board would work with it. If you wanted to keep the CPU and slap in a graphic card, that works with it as well. If you wanted to downgrade this and do something else, there is so much room that you could play around with and this case will allow it. So if you decide to go um, the Ryzen 5 and wanna overclock everything out of it, but you need a water cool, this case supports the water cool. So this whole build, it's like a stepping stone to so much more you can do. It's like the bare bone, maybe a little bit higher than the bare bone, but you could build on top of it and make this a really good gaming computer, especially if you throw in like a 1080 or a 1070 in here, pair it up with like a Ryzen 7 and I don't know, 16 gigs of RAM. This, this thing would kill. Now you might notice that I haven't mentioned about one thing, which is storage. That's because my father still has that 500 gigabyte SSD and that's the SSD I'm gonna be using on this build. 
but you're up for any storage option you want because this computer will fit it. As far as price goes and everything, uh, it's hard to say because price keeps going down. So lucky for you, this actually came out to be under a $350 build by $30 or $40, I think. When I bought this case, it was $65. Now Newegg is selling it for $55. Uh, this motherboard, when I bought it, was $100. Now it's $95. Uh, the CPU still stay the same at 99. The RAM went down in price. I bought it at 57, now it's at 55. And when I bought this power supply, it was $30. I, I really didn't check how much this was, but ultimately this whole build and everything came out to like about 320, 330 or something like that. And I'll leave all the links in the description for all the parts that I used. Let's put this together and see what the temps and how it performs. All right, so now that we're done with the build, let's talk about it a little bit. Now, first you're gonna notice this shroud. You could actually remove this shroud, but it allows you to actually put water cooling over here on this side or fan. And underneath, it allows you to put two, two and a half millimeter drives or three and a half millimeter drive in between that. Now, after sliding this off, I might actually just keep this off because I'm not gonna be using those drives or water cooling it yet. So here we have the internals of the computer. Now, the bottom allows you to put two 120 millimeter fans, but if you decide to put in a full size graphic card, you will need to use a slim version of the fans. And as you can see, it has plenty of room for a full size graphic card. Now I don't have a modular power supply, so I was able to tuck all the wires up into the front. And because I don't like the mustard colored wires, I ended up having to rotate this fan upward so the wires point up, and I was able to snake it behind the actual case itself. Otherwise, um, everything is pretty clean. I was able to tuck all the wires behind there and the motherboard cable. Now, this cable, normally I would see people running it from the bottom coming to the top. I decided to go the other way since I don't have a fan up here. Uh, that's the only downside. If you decide to run this motherboard cable, you can't use the 120 millimeter fan that you wanna use in the front. Let me show you the panel. This is the top panel where you're allowed to put two 120 millimeter fans. And by putting the motherboard cable on top, you're not gonna be able to stick the fan here, but you'll still be able to use one on the opposite side. So this is my cable management. What I ended up doing, like I said, I ran this to the top, the motherboard cable. And then this is the USB cable that kind of like sticks out a little bit, but once you close the case, it's gonna kind of push it in. The mustard cable is over here, along with the CPU cable. And then this is the, for the audio right over here. And then um, for these little cables that you see coming out over here, that's just for the power. Now I'm gonna be putting a hard drive here, two and a half millimeter hard drive right in the back uh, with, when I get that from my father. And that's it, that's about it. It's a really clean look. Uh, as you can see from the front, you barely see any wires and yet you have tons of room for improvement. All right, so first thing I would upgrade on this computer would probably be cooling solution. Uh, spend an extra 30 or 40 bucks, buy a couple of fans, maybe get some fans on the bottom. I wouldn't put a fan in the front because my wires are there. And even though I wouldn't really do anything because you do have some breathing room, but not as much as you do on the bottom. Now on the bottom, it has a filter. So that's another reason why I would just put fans on the bottom. Uh, the CPU cooler, I would probably upgrade as soon as I can because yes, while this is a pretty decent cooler, if you're gonna start overclocking and running this 24 hours a day, you probably want a better cooling solution. The next thing I would probably upgrade aside from cooling, if you are a gamer, then definitely a graphic card. If not, then I would upgrade RAM. That's my second approach because more RAM equals better workflow, better smoother experience for everything. So RAM would be the second thing I wanna upgrade. It's got eight gigs right now, which is great for just productivity and light gaming. But once you start going into Photoshop and stuff like that, you're gonna want more RAM. All right, so let's test out what this guy could do and how the temperatures are in this build. So before I show you all the gameplay footage, I kinda wanna show you all the heat maps and 
stuff that happens inside the case. So as of right now on idle, not even idle, when it's not booted up, it's taking about one watt of power. So I'm gonna power this guy on right now. As you can see already on boot up, it's taking about 45 watts of power. All right, so as you can see right now, the board is the only thing that's kind of hot and the heatsink thing on the bottom. As far as the wattage goes, it's hovering around 30 to 25 after it's all booted up and everything is just sitting there pretty. So what we're gonna be doing is a heavenly benchmark, which is about a four minute benchmark that stresses on the GPU and a little bit on the CPU, just enough to bring the temperatures up to see how the computer looks like at the end. And I'm also gonna be using um, hardware monitor just to see the CPU temps. So for this test, I'm actually gonna be running window mode. That way I could still capture the temperatures using the hardware monitor. And we're gonna see a quick time-lapse of before and after. All right, so there we have it. The benchmark is finished. I think the highest I've seen peaking was 75 watts and the max temperature was 52. As far as the heat map goes, this is very interesting. You can see at the bottom is actually heating up on the case along with the sides and the top. You know, with the blower style that you have like this where it's blowing downward and all the heat is spreading around, that's what's gonna happen. Now, if you're gonna ask me why I didn't use the case, just take a look at this. This case is almost completely clear, so it doesn't make much of a difference if I left this housing on or not. So I decided to keep it off just so I could film this heat portion a little bit better. Uh, the scores on this is 2,366 with an uh, average FPS score of 93.9, which is not too bad. Now I'm using a 720 windowed mode and all the settings are low. Um, just enough for me to get the temperatures and everything up. So the next test, what I'm gonna be doing is the same exact thing, just overclocked. And we'll see what the difference in temperature is there. So these are the settings I have for the overclock, which is a light overclock on the CPU running at 3,700 megahertz and the GPU at 1,600 megahertz from 1,100 megahertz. And then I bumped up the voltages a little bit just to support the faster, uh, higher speeds. So I'm gonna rerun the heavenly benchmark and also do the hardware monitor. And then we'll see how it looks like at the end. All right, here we go. That was a huge jump, especially, okay, from the wattage from the wall, we were doing about 75 peak, and I saw this peak at 135 at one point. Right now it's averaging, just running the GPU benchmark program is at 126, 125. Also the heat map, you could actually see that it's starting to spew out. The heat is spewing out onto the table itself. And the temperature of the CPU last week when we saw it was peak was at 52 degrees Celsius. And this time it peaked at 81. The FPS went from 93 up to 102, which that is pretty impressive. The scores, I think it was 2300. Correct me if I'm wrong, I didn't write it down. But now it's 2593. Overall, the benchmark worked really well. It's very stable. It hasn't flickered or nothing happened, but it literally doubled, almost doubled the wattage input. The heat went up 30 degrees from 50 to 80, and basically the entire case is getting really warm. Now, for argument's sakes, let's say we did buy a $10 fan and placed it on the bottom where the heat is most spreading, where, and there's also a filter and everything. We're gonna put it right on the bottom run the benchmark again with the overclock and see what the temperatures are then. All right, so we got the results in. Overall, the temperature was lowered by one degree Celsius for the CPU temps. Uh, the wattage did go up a hair because you're running another five watt fan. And the temperatures in the case look very similar. Uh, I mean, other than the fact that there's cool air coming in from the bottom and it dropped it down by one degree, it wasn't too significant. Uh, but what will change this the most is the actual, if you get a better heatsink. This is where I'm actually comfortable with on this heatsink. If you were to change it to one of those big tower ones, uh, I will probably be able to overclock this a little bit more. According to attempts, think around 80 to 85, you would see the CPU start throttling. So we're right at the peak where we want it to be or where we're comfortable. You might even want to slow down the GPU clock a hair 
just to keep the performance if you you are in like a warm or hot environment right now my ambient temperature is 70 degrees fahrenheit so you really have to play around with that so let's let's test out some games and i don't have a lot of triple a titles uh, but i do have a few games that i could run the benchmark against and we'll see what numbers we get from there So my final thoughts about this build, uh, the case itself, you don't have to make any sacrifices. You're able to put all the storage you want, a full-size graphic card. It's very easy for cable management in this case, so you're not have, you don't have to worry about that, as well as airflow. I mean, this thing has tons of breathing room where a lot of other ITX builds struggle to have, and you're not losing water cooling or whatever. You could still put that in. And best of all, you can do this. All right, so there we have it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys got any questions about it, hit it in the comments below. Or if I could have done something different about this video, let me know so I could improve in the future. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.